This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's my privilege to be with you today and to lead you in worship. As you see perhaps from the screen, that uh, my name is Dr. David Price. I'm a retired pastor living in Eota, Minnesota. A couple of words about the service. Uh, the entire service will be on the screen today. So you have an option. Uh, following the screen or following in the hymnal or a little of each and uh, we'll try to have that all in sync <laughs> we've worked very hard at trying to get that ready so I uh, hope that uh, contributes to your worship today there are a lot of visuals that go with the words and that is also to enhance your um, meaning, the meaning for you of your, your worship, and uh, to uh, make it uh, a little more thought-provoking as well. Our opening hymn is uh, a hymn to the Trinity. This is Holy Trinity Sunday. Come, thou almighty King. Each of the first three stanzas is dedicated to one of the persons of the Trinity, and then the fourth stanza is a doxology, we call it, a hymn of praise, and uh, it's customary to stand for a doxology verse of a hymn. So we will stand for the fourth stanza of the opening hymn. That being said, the Lord bless our worship together.
It actually begins on page 204. Now with the here with the intro and followed by the period. You speak responsibly to the intro as you see on the screen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and the undivided unity. Let us give glory to him because he has shown mercy to us. Ascribe to the Lord, O mighty ones. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. To God on high be glory and peace to all the earth. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O eternal and unchangeable God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, with the angels and the archangels we laud and magnify your holy name. By your creative word you formed the heavens and the earth and every living thing that dwells upon the earth. By delivering your word made flesh, your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to be crucified as self-sacrifice for sin, according to your plan of salvation, you provided salvation for the whole world. By the word of the gospel, your Holy Spirit recreated us and delivered to us your forgiveness and salvation. For all these mighty acts, the Holy Church throughout the world praises you and acknowledges you to be the Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the lessons of the day. And again, the 
words of the scripture are accompanied by scenes from life, from God's created world, to make it more meaningful. The Old Testament reading for today is from Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. He called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the heavens. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And so it was. And God called the expanse heaven, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And so it was. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. And so it was. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to its their own kind, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And so it was. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarm according to their kind, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kind, livestock and creeping things, and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the livestock according to their kinds, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. 
And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food, and to every beast of the earth, and to every bird in the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And so it was. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all of the hosts of them. And on the seventh day God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that, had, that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Acts chapter 2. As a bridge between the first reading and the second reading, there's a part of the service that's called the gradual, which means steps, and uh, this forms that part, which uh, you didn't have the access to that. But uh, these are the words and the images. He is the image of the Creator, upholding all things by the word of His power. By faith we understand that the universe was created at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. He's got the whole world in his hand. The sun is the radiance of God's glory in the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. This is only the beginning. Let's read. second reading is from Acts chapter 2. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, and I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon me, abandon my souls to Hades, or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life, and you will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence that the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn an oath to him that he would set one of the descendants on his throne. He foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did the flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of all, all we are witness, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this to you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
In honor of our Lord's word to us and the word made flesh, I invite you as you are able to rise for the singing of the Alleluia and verse. <laughs> that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Lamb of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. Even then. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always. To the end of the age. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. We declare our faith in response to the God's word to us in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the next hymn, Lord, open now my heart to hear.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The text is part of the gospel for this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Where have you heard that before? You may be seated. Trinity Sunday gives us an opportunity and occasion to focus particularly on God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as he chose to re reveal himself and make his, himself known to us in these words, which are used so often. I'm going to pause here for a moment or maybe a couple of minutes to uh, lead into something with regard to the name. We're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit here. Shakespeare once wrote, what's in a name? He was suggesting that uh, it really doesn't make much difference what a name is or what a person's name is. But I beg to differ. If you have a check and it isn't signed, the name makes a big difference. A contract doesn't become valid until the signature is fixed to it. And what a difference it made when a person is baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thus making that person his child for eternity. I'd say that makes a big difference. Another way of looking at it is uh, like this past week or so, a great deal of uh, focus and attention was given to the signing of legislation by our president and by our governor. And it wouldn't become law, the law of the land, until their name, their signature was put on it. So for that reason, I'd say name means a lot. And in fact, Jesus emphasized that too. Well, before I get into that one, uh, say, say, for example, you have a book by a favorite author of yours, and you have an opportunity to meet that person and have them personally sign your book. How much more precious that would be. You probably wouldn't want to part with it, would it? So the name means a lot. And Jesus referred to that too when he said, Wherever two or three are gathered together, as we are, in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And so in the light of that, we see that going on now. This set of words that we have, which we call the invocation, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is not just a traditional formula, something that's printed on one line on, in your hymnal, but rather it is a reality. As you experience the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of His Holy Spirit, you are, in effect, seeing God in 3D. By that I mean he becomes more real, more personal to you. So our goal for today is to realize that our belief in God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is not just a, a line in the hymnal or a doctrine in the Catechism, but it is a dynamic living relationship with our living Lord, something we experience, a reality. And so the task of proclaiming God's Word is rather challenging. 
It is to take the truth of the triune God off of a printed page and show how vital this faith is for life. By way of illustration, if you draw something on paper, it's only two-dimensional. Or if you, yes, it has width and it has height, but it doesn't have depth. Even with a, a painting or a photograph that is in great detail, uh, you can tell, because it's flat, that it's not real. One more, please. And another. I came across this uh, rather unique picture. What do you see? Please, one more click. What you have there is really an optical illusion. Really, that's a flat sidewalk. But this expert artist has uh, painted in such a way that it looks like it's three-dimensional. It looks like the steps are actually going down. They're not. It can fool you. That's an illustration of something that's effective as 3D. There was a great breakthrough in this idea of something being flat and not very uh, convincing when uh, somebody invented, first of all, a stereoscope, which you see up in the upper left-hand corner. And as you look through that, the um, pictures look more realistic, except they were just black and white or the other kind of colors that photography had in those days kind of an off-brown, so they lacked color. Then came the Viewmaster. Some of you will remember that. And this uh, helped a person to look and see things almost like being there. It appeared to be in three dimensions, live and in color, you might say. And then, of course, there came the 3D movies, and if you've ever experienced a realistic 3D movie, you know how realistic it can be, almost like you can reach out and touch them. And now the latest development is uh, something called virtual reality. Putting on a headset and it's like you're, you're part of something going on around you. Well, that's what I mean by 3D, something that makes it feel more real like you can actually reach out and, and, and touch someone. That is quite a treat, isn't it? Now, that would be uh, my goal for whatever I try to show you from God's Word, to give you a sense of God being so real that you could reach out and touch Him or be touched by him. Now that's a tall order. I can't do it. It takes someone special, someone with a capital S, and we know that to be the Holy Spirit to bring that about. So <clears throat> for that, uh, what would it take? Um, looking back again at the 3D movies, it takes something, so special eyeglasses to be able to see in 3D for it to have its true effect. Otherwise, it doesn't appear to be real. In fact, it can be blurry and distorted and not very convincing. So you need those 3D glasses. And to see God in 3D also takes we might say special lenses which give you eyes of faith supplied by the Holy Spirit 
And without that special vision of faith, the doctrine of the Trinity, the doctrine of God in the Bible, would perhaps appear not much different than any purely human words on a page. And preaching may be actually a confusing affair. I hope that this is not an example of a confusing affair. However, with the insight, the special kind of sight of faith given to you by the Holy Spirit, God is real indeed. He is alive and close, here and now. He has reached out and touched you. And you can reach out and touch God immediately, directly, anywhere, anytime, in prayer, even without needing a cell phone or any kind of special connection. God did, in fact, bait himself visibly and tangibly real when the Son of God became the Son of Man, tangibly People could actually reach out and touch him. He reached out to touch us where we live. And remember also Jesus invited Thomas on Easter or the week after Easter to reach out and touch his hands and his side to show he's real. Not a ghost, not a figment of his lively imagination, not a, an hallucination by people who were so distraught from grief that they began seeing and hearing things. Not just wishful thinking. He was alive and is alive and real. He is still real and present, though now unseen by the unaided human eye. Science uh, may question whether Jesus is real because you can't see him. And yet all around us are realities which we are not equipped to see, like light waves, electronic waves, radio waves, dancing in the air all around us. With special equipment, however, special receivers, we can be touched by beautiful music, in the air, or live broadcasts from around the world. And since that is commonplace in our day, it could have a sort of a negative effect on us that our sense of wonder in the, the vibrant presence of the living God all around us is, is dulled and desensitized. We may think nothing of it. But part of our purpose today is why we are here is to think more of it about God's presence and his reality. And certainly one purpose of worship is that very thing, to resensitize us to the presence of God here and everywhere. I am with you always. By experiencing his presence here, we are more conscious of the presence of God everywhere, according to his promise. And read it with me. I am with you always, even to the end of the world. The Spirit gives us those 3D contact lenses, you might call them, which put us in touch with the living God. We benefit from these I'll call them 3D contacts, by being put in contact with God in baptism, the Word, and Holy Communion. All of these make God more real to us, convince us of his reality and his involvement in our life personally. So in baptism, the living Lord reached out and touched your life and mine, and uh, with his... Your, and, and also our spirits, making you and me his new creation. Just as the Spirit hovered over the waters when he once said, let there be light, and there was light, 
So also in baptism, God says, let there be life. And there is life, spiritual life, new creation, a miracle. In his living word, inspired by the Holy Spirit, which means breathe in. God breathes life into our deflated spirits. We receive the life breath by which our heart for God is energized and, and we can live by him and for him. That is why we need to daily stay in touch with God's word. And in Holy Communion as well, with the aid of tangible realities of bread and wine, we can touch and taste and feel. God helps us to realize his real presence, his personal presence presence and involvement with us. He is really here with us personally. He touches our lives anew, assuring us that he is real indeed, and so are all of his promises, all that he has spoken and promised. And so we experience his forgiveness, his closeness. We know he is with us, and we don't face life alone. He gives us a renewed sense of his presence, power, and purpose. And we are active participants. It's an experience for us. A personal experience. Some evangelists like to say, have you received Christ personally? And I, as a person who participates in Holy Communion, I'd say, absolutely. Every time I... I receive communion, I receive Jesus personally. So these three ways help us to see our triune God in 3D, three dimensions, so that he is indeed real to us, and we are again amazed and moved to worship and praise. And I have to admit, although the word dimensions is inadequate as any human illustration or language would be in describing God. Uh, it's inadequate to describe the three persons of the Trinity. Nevertheless, it can serve a purpose. Hopefully it does. He revealed himself to us to see him in the three persons or dimensions of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. May the living God, Father, Son, Spirit, be real for you this day and every day. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Amen. Having heard the word of God, I now invite you to uh, take this moment for confession and absolution. And for that, as you are able, I invite you to rise. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. <laughs> Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen.
Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As an ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, which is what that in the name of the Father means, I forgive you all your sins and assure you of their forgiveness in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Invite the ushers now to bring forth the offering to the altar of the Lord. Lord Jesus, take the gifts here given, and may they lead, help to lead to heaven poor anguished souls that know thee not, that they with us share heaven's lot. Amen. <clears throat> we pray. O Heavenly Father, give zeal to your church as your people continue to fulfill your mission of baptizing and teaching all nations. Guide all foreign missionaries and their families as they seek to carry out your command of making disciples of all nations. Bless our efforts as we patiently listen to the needs of our neighbors. Give us wisdom as we prayerfully consider how to respond to their words and situations with law and gospel. By our words and deeds, use our Christian witness to proclaim your salvation and to serve our neighbor in Christ's name. Almighty God, you bless the earth to make it fruitful, bring forth in abundance whatever is needed for the support of our lives. Prosper the work of farmers and all those who labor to bring food to our table. Grant seasonable weather that they may produce the fruits of the earth in abundance and proclaim your goodness with thanksgiving. Lord Jesus, you promise to be with us always. Visit those who are in any type of distress with the promise that you abide with them even in their infirmities. Comfort them with the assurance that you understand the pain they are suffering because you yourself suffered to the point of death on the cross. Especially we pray for those sick, homebound, undergoing tests and treatment who are known to you and known to us and who we name in our hearts now before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Despite their illnesses and afflictions, strengthen their faith so they may bear any hardship in patience and trust until you grant them deliverance, peace, and health. Graciously bless the work of all relief agencies as they provide assistance to those suffering from natural disasters and personal crises. Dear Savior, in the sacrament of the altar, you abide with us in a most intimate way, very personally. In the eating and drinking of your true body and blood, you come to us and bring forgiveness, life, and salvation. Grant that we who approach your table this day do so in repentance for our sin, recognizing your presence in and under the bread and wine. Strengthen our faith, increase our love and hope, and assure us a place at your heavenly table where we shall eat eternal manna and drink of the river of life forever and ever. Father of an infinite majesty, hear our prayers for the sake of your adorable, true, and only Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> As you are able, I invite you to stand for the service of the sacrament, page 208 and follow. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord. Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing, Holy, Holy, Holy. Earth, heaven and earth with full accord, Shout the glory of your name. Sing Hosanna in the highest. Sing Hosanna to the Lord. Truly blessed is he who comes in the name of Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup following supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, each of you. This cup is the new, <coughs> new covenant in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. may be seated for the August day.
welcome to the table of the Lord.